and welcome to this tutorial on one of the most important panels for preparing your clips ready for editing in the timeline. We're looking at the source panel, which is incredibly important for preparing your clips, making sure they're the right length and then getting them to your timeline as quickly as possible. Now when I edit, I've got my video bin open here, I could just say take a clip, click on the icon and drag it down to the timeline. And then if you hit the backslash key, it zooms in and then if I go to the end of the clip I get this little trim tool which is a red square bracket with a two-way arrow and I could just trim the length of the clip to whatever length I want it to be but actually that's probably not the most efficient way to prepare your clips for editing so I'm gonna delete that and click and select it and hit the delete key and instead of dragging it down to the timeline I'm gonna double click on it and if I double click on the icon it opens it up as you can see in the source panel now the source panel is a way of selecting the bit of the clip that you want to use precisely and then dragging it and dropping it or getting it down to with other keys the timeline. Now I can preview the clip simply by hitting the play button and I've got a 52 second long clip which is a bit long so I'm going to pull this timeline along we can have a look at it. Not a lot's happening and then oh the kids start running back and that's quite fun. The rest of it's fairly boring and, and at the end of the clip you'll probably see that uh, the sun goes in, the clouds start to arrive, and then at the very end there's a, there's a camera movement. So I'm definitely not going to want to use the end of this clip, and in fact I probably don't want to use much more than this, this section with the children running as the waves come in. So if I go to the point where I want the clip to begin, which is say about there, then I need to set an in point telling that this is where I want the part of my clip to begin. Now I could go to the beginning of my clip and get the red trim tool and pull it in to roughly where my current time indicator is. Um, but actually there's a better way of doing it. There are two buttons here. This one says set in point I key and this one here says set out point O key. And If you look on your keyboard you'll see that I and O are right next to each other. So what I can do is I can get my current time indicator to exactly the frame I want to use and I can click either I key or just set in point and instantly that drags the beginning of the clip to exactly where your current time indicator is. Now what if you're struggling to find the exact frame? What you can do is you can use some of these tools in the middle. I can go backwards one frame at a time until I can find precisely the frame I want or I can go forwards one frame at a time to precisely the place I want. Alternatively I have what's called a shuttle now if I pull the shuttle a little bit it's going to pull the clip forward just slowly but if I pull it far far to the end it's going to go really quick again I can go backwards slowly and then really quickly but you might think that that's actually not precise enough for what you want to do so underneath we have a jog wheel and I can just pull that jog wheel one frame or a couple of frames forwards and backwards till I find precisely the place I want to start just by moving backwards and forwards with the jog wheel. And then when I get, well, that's exactly where I want to start, then I can go back and I can hit the I key, or I can click this icon set in point and the beginning of my clip set. Now, I then can move forward, and I can either move forward, I can either play and stop, so it can go with the shuttle backwards and forwards, and then when I get close, I can then use the jog wheel to get the precise frame that I want to finish on and I can click the set out point key or hit the O button and it'll take the end of my clip and drag it so that is the bit that I have selected. However, different way of being able to preview and these are the J, K and L keys. You'll see them on your keyboard J, K and L. J is going to play backwards, K is going to stop L is going to play forwards. Now if I hit the L key to play forwards it goes at full speed. If I hit the L key again it goes quicker and again it goes quicker and again it goes even faster and I can hit the K key and stop. Or I can hit the J key to play backwards and again to go faster backwards and again to go faster backwards and keep going and then hit the K key to stop. But what if I want it to go backwards and forwards really slowly? then I have to add what's called a modifier key and that modifier key is the shift key. If I hold down the shift key and push L 
it's going to move forward ever so slowly as you can see it's counting up in frames just one two just a few frames at a time you see the C coming in if I push it again it'll go a little bit quicker and again quicker still but still it's not getting to full speed I hit K to stop and again if I hit the shift key and hit J I'm going backwards very very slowly very very slowly and going faster and faster backwards as I keep on hitting the J key with the shift key down and I can push stop with the K key so that's how you can use keyboards you can use I and O which are right next to each other and for going backwards you can use the J key stop K key forwards L key and if you want them to go extra slow either backwards or forwards you hold the shift key while you're tapping J and L so lots of ways of controlling where your current time indicator is to find precisely the frames that you want to use and over here it tells me precisely how long this clip is and then if I want to drag the clip down to my timeline it can do so by clicking and dragging no problems at all I'm going to control Z or command Z to undo that alternatively I could use the insert clip or the overlay clip for this first clip anyway so if I click insert clip it is going to insert where my current time indicator was so if I click the insert clip again it, my current time indicator being at the end of this clip it will insert another copy of the clip and this time I'm not seeing them in my source panel I'm seeing them in my program panel over here I obviously don't want two copies of my clip so I can get rid of those so select delete select delete there is a shortcut for this and that is the comma key which as you will notice on your keyboard is just below the K and the L key so if I have got my current time indicator to precisely where I want it to be and I hit the comma key I get an insert edit I'll explain about inserts and overlays in just a moment right so I can click that and delete it and I'm now going to open another clip I'm going to open this one called Island Lighthouse double click on that it opens it up in my source panel and what I actually have here are two clips which have somehow got joined together and there's a bit of a problem in the middle I don't know if you can see but just as I finish the lighthouse bit before I go to the castle there's a bit of a movement on the camera so I want to make sure I know where those are and I don't want to use them so using my jog wheel just to show where the first movement is there's the first movement just go back a frame before the movement I can now set a marker to tell me exactly where that is and that's what this little button here is if I click on that I've set a marker it tells me up here a marker is set but I can't really see it until I move my current time indicator and there's the marker in the source panel now if I then get my key and I go forward a frame at a time until I've gone through this movement and then I've got to a nice stable bit of the castle which is that's fine get back a frame I can now set another marker to say that is the end of the difficult patch click the set marker or alternatively hit the asterisk key on your number pad there you go a second one is set and I can go between these markers with these little icons here so go to previous marker go to previous marker go back and I'm going backwards and forwards between my markers which puts my current time indicator in precisely for this one the right place to put the out point so I hit O on my keyboard or I hit this little icon here I set the out point so that I'm ready for my lighthouse but as you can see I can't use all of that clip and anyway it would be a bit too long so I just want a few seconds of the lighthouse so I'm going to go to about there hit I or click this icon and there I've got a nice bit of the lighthouse to use and I can take it down to my timeline make sure my current time indicator is in the right place by either hitting the, the insert icon or even the overlay icon at this point and hit the apostrophe key for the insert and there it is in my timeline now I want to add in the castle so I can use this button here to go to the next marker that's the end of this section and click it again go to the marker where the castle starts hit the in point and then work out how much I want of the castle don't want lots that's about enough then I can set my out point and that's my castle and I can click the insert edit again or even the overlay either will do to bring another copy down and so now I have you see over here in the program panel 
we've got the lighthouse which then goes to the castle and we don't have that horrible glitch in the middle where things move brilliant that's that's fantastic that's just just what we want to do but what is the difference between an insert edit and an overlay edit well let me get rid of the lighthouse to start off with delete it and take my current time indicator to say the middle of the clip now if I click the insert edit as you can see from the icon it's showing you that something is going to be split and something is going to be inserted in the middle what will happen is that Premiere Pro will cut this clip in half exactly where the current time indicator is and then insert the present clip in the middle where the two cuts have been made so let's do that either hit the comma key or click insert and as you can see I have the lighthouse it's been cut in half the castle's been brought in and then the other half of the lighthouse shows so control Z to undo that however if I had my key here and I was to use the full stop key or the overlay watch what happens I'm going to overlay the rest of my clip from where my current time indicator is forwards I'm going to overlay it so hit the full stop key keyboard shortcut or just hit the overlay icon click I have gone over the top of the clip so I've shortened the length of the lighthouse clip and completely overlaid it with the castle clip and that's the difference between an insert edit and an overlay edit an insert edit will cut exactly where the current time indicator is and insert a clip in the middle an overlay edit will write over whatever is there so these are the tools in our timeline however there are a few more let me just show you I have two buttons here one says go to the in point so I can click that and it'll take me to the in point of my clip and this one says go to the out point I also have the play in to out so click that it's going to play just the in to out and at the moment I don't have this button enabled which is the loop button if I was to click the loop button so it's enabled and then play in to out it'll just carry on playing the clip round and round and round and I can if I want at the time be fiddling with these in and out points making sure I get precisely the right place but I don't want to loop at the moment I'm going to push stop and I'm going to undo that the only other buttons are these three firstly we have got the safe margin which shows me the title safe area and the action safe area and what that's saying is if you are going to put any titles on this screen make sure you put them inside this box if you want to make sure they are viewable on all television screens the outer box is the action safe box and it says if you want your action to be clear on every television screen that watches this then make sure you do not go with action beyond this boundary so that's the title safe and the action safe then I have all kinds of scopes I'm not going to go into these so if I want to see all the digital information about my clip I can click say on all scopes and then rather than having the video image I have got scope information which I can use for color correction and improving my clip but um, I'm not going to go through those I'm going to just go back to composite video composite video being just the video itself and I'm going to turn off the safe margins the only other button I've got is this CS5 button which says export frame if I click on this button it is going to export the current frame where my current time indicator is as a still image so I can click on it I can rename it I can choose what type of file it will be and I can choose where it's going to be and then I would click OK and I would have a still image and if I just show you I've got CS4 open in the background here and I have a clip of somebody digging a hole in the ground and as you will see we do not have the output still so CS4 doesn't have that option but CS5 does and it's a fantastic option for exporting single frames really quickly thank you Adobe for including it back in CS5 so that's an introduction to the source panel I hope you found it useful and you'll find that by using the keyboard shortcuts you can actually whip through clips very very quickly I'm Andrew Davis, and I hope you found this tutorial useful thank you for watching <laughs>